This meeting is being webcasted and is being recorded. We can start now. Dr. Mountain, you have control of the board. This meeting Thank is being you, recorded. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technician board meeting. Uh, my name is Dr. Carol Mountain. I'm the board president. And I would like to call this meeting to order. And we will uh, start by uh, establishing a roll call. But very quickly, I'd like to welcome, we have two new, new members, Ms. Tara Rooks, our new LVN member, and Mr. Abraham Hill, our new PT member. And we'd just like to take a minute to welcome them. So with that done, could we please do a roll call? Um, uh, let's see, maybe I'll just call it out and we'll, people can establish if they're here. Uh, Paula Amazola D. Herrera. Present. Thank you. Alita Carpenter. Yes, good morning, I'm here. Good morning. John Durking. Yes, good morning and welcome to our new members. Abraham Hill. I am here, thank you for the welcome. Welcome. Uh, Ken Maxey. Present, good morning. Good morning. Donna Norton. Good morning, everyone. Donna Norton, present. Tara Rooks. Good morning, everyone. This is Tara. Thank you for the welcome. Thank you. I'll remember Tara. Uh, Melissa Rubel-Calva. <clears throat> good morning. I am present. Thank you. Cheryl Turner. This is a moderator. She is present, but I believe she's having technical difficulties with her microphone at the moment. Oh, thank you so much, Vicki. You're welcome. All right. At this time, I will ask to see if there is, we have a, established a quorum, and I will ask to see if there's any comment on items not on the agenda. Uh, anyone from the board or uh, moderator? Am I? It, do we take questions from the audience at this point? I do not think I cannot. Okay. So if there are no questions from the board members, are there any questions from the board members? Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to move on to the petitioner hearings. And I just want to let everyone know that there's a change of order. Hello? I just wanted to let you know there's a there's a change of order. Uh, so please address adjust your agenda to reflect the following change. Is is Mr. Uh, Christopher Byers uh, going to be able to be present at this point? I know his attorney was held up. Has anyone heard? Okay, um, so I think we're going to be starting with uh, Arlene Tarico and moving on to Susan Blackwell and then Louis Avelis and then Joanna Vasilev. Um, moderator, have you, has anyone else heard back from Helen about uh, Mr. Byers? I no, I have not heard from I, I have, this is Helen. I have not heard from Mr. Byers attorney so far. So, Judge Van Ruin, if it's all right, could we please start with uh, Ms. Tarico, Arlene Tarico? Absolutely, no problem. Excellent, no thank you so much. <clears throat> This is the moderator, Arlene, and her attorney they have to control their mics. Hi, this is Arlene. They both control. Hi, hi, Mr. Rico. This is Judge Van Royen. And, and um, do I also have Mr. Cohen with you? Yes. yes, I'm here. All right, good morning to both of you. Thank you. And can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Okay, so we're ready to get started. All right. This is the my understanding once, is 
Go ahead. Hello, this is the business moderator for Arlene and her attorney. Can you please turn on your cameras? Thank you. All right, I can see Ms. Tariko now. And Mr. Mm -hmm. Cohen, have you turned on your camera yet? Uh, well, there we go, I can see you. Okay. Terrific, thank you so much. Um, and then I would just ask to make sure everyone else who's not speaking or mutes their, their microphone so we don't have as much background noise uh, interfering with this. And then my understanding is that these this petition hearing is being recorded by WebEx, correct, Madam Moderator? That is correct. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, great. So we're ready to go on the record. All right. We are on the record before the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians, Department of Consumer Affairs for the state of California. We're here to review several petitions for reinstatement, and we are taking them out of order from how they appear in the agenda. The first one will be a petition for reinstatement filed by Arlene Tarico. This is OAH case number 2020100579. My name is Wim Van Royen. I'm an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings for the state of California, and I've been assigned to preside over this matter today. Today is November 19, 2020 at 9 a.m. Uh, we are conducting this matter via WebEx video conference due to the COVID-19 public health crisis and the governor's executive order in-29-20 dated March 17, 2020. And I will let the record reflect that uh, we have already taken a roll call of the board members and that we do have a quorum of board members present here today to hear the petitions. Um, may I please have an appearance by the Deputy Attorney General? Good morning, Caitlin Doherty, Deputy Attorney General. I'm appearing on behalf of the Attorney General pursuant to Business and Profession Code Section 2878.7 and Government Code Section 11522, representing the people of the state of California. I'm here to assist the administrative law judge and the board of vocational nursing and psychiatric technicians in fact finding. My role is not adversarial, but is intended to protect the public interest. I'm here to ensure that the administrative law judge and the board of vocational nursing and psychiatric technicians have adequate information from which, from which to make a decision today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Doherty. And then appearances on behalf of the petitioner, please. Yes, hello, this is John Cohan, attorney for the petitioner. Good morning to you, Mr. Cohan, and good morning to you, Ms. Arika. I know we were informally introduced off the record earlier on, but thank you for being here today. Um, so just a couple of general reminders. I'm sorry, am I hearing background noise? Someone trying to speak? Oh, it must just be feedback. All right, um, sorry about that. Um, in terms of how the hearing will proceed today, first, uh, our, uh, um, the Deputy Attorney General will present, uh, proceed to pre introduce the petition packet and provide us with an orientation in this matter. And then after that, the petitioner will have the right to make a presentation under oath to explain why the petition should be granted. Um, and that, Mr. Cohen, includes if you would like to make an opening statement, you're welcome to do that as well before uh, your client testifies. And then Obviously, the, the petitioner will be subject to questioning by uh, the Deputy Attorney General and the board members. Um, and also, if uh, there are any other witnesses that will be testifying, they would as well be subject to questioning by the Deputy Attorney General and board members. Again, the board members are particularly concerned today with rehabilitation that the petitioner may have engaged in. Um, and the board members have had the benefit of reading the petition packet. So it's not necessary to repeat everything that's included in the package, but it certainly can be helpful to highlight or emphasize any portions the petitioner is appropriate. Uh, after the hearing today, the board will go into a closed session to deliberate. The petitioner will not receive a decision today, but will receive it in the mail at some point in the future. Um, any questions, Mr. Cohan, before we get started? Any questions from you, Mr. Cohen? Oh, you are muted, Mr. Cohen. You are still muted. I can see you talking, but I don't hear your voice. 
All right, now? Now I can hear you fine. Okay. No, I have no questions. Thank you so much. All right. Um, then, Ms. Dougherty, I will turn it over to you to present the, the petition packet and provide us with an orientation of the case, please. Thank you. First, I would like to mark for identification and offer into evidence as Exhibit A, the original petition packet with accompanying documents. The board members and petitioner have been provided with a copy of the same set of this exhibit and consists of the following. A petition for reinstatement completed by petitioner today, dated April 22nd, 2020. A letter from petition petitioner's treating psychiatrist dated July 24th, 2019. Petitioner included two copies of this letter. From pages 18 to 19, petitioner provided numerous letters of recommendation to the board today. At this time, I would offer this packet as Exhibit A into evidence. Any objection to admission of Exhibit A, Mr. Cohen? Uh, you need to unmute yourself, sir. Sorry. There we I go. I apologize. I didn't do anything. It, it seemed to have gone unmuted on its own. No, I have no objection. Thank you so much, sir, and no, no apologies needed. Exhibit A is admitted. Thank you. What's been pre-marked as Exhibit B is petitioner's license certification. At this time, I'd offer um, Exhibit B for all purposes. Any objection to Exhibit B? No, I have no objections. Exhibit B is admitted. What's been pre-marked as Exhibit C is a notice of hearing and related correspondence for the hearing on this matter today. I'd ask that Exhibit C be admitted for all purposes at this time. Any objection to Exhibit C? No objection. Exhibit C is admitted. Thank you. What's been pre-marked as Exhibit D is the final decision in order, case number VN-2011-1324, surrounding petitioner's license with the attached accusation in case number VN-2011-1324. I would ask that Exhibit D be admitted for all purposes at this time. Any objection to Exhibit D? No objection. Exhibit D is admitted. Last is a addendum to the petition packet marked as Exhibit AA that was provided to all the board members, which generally consists of an MMCRH health insurance premiums um, employee handbook addendum for petitioner, dental vision, chiropractic life enrollment form for petitioner, and numerous continuing education courses that were completed in 2019 and 2020 along with a current BLS provider certificate and a Northwest College certificate of completion for a SIM chart for medical office EH and a Northwest College certificate for a medical assistant dated July 2015. Following that is an assistant league of Southern California progress completion report dated March 14, 2013. I'd also like to point out for the board, the last three documents in that addendum are three dismissal and the three underlying criminal matters that brought cause to this accusation. They're all dated November 14, 2016. At this time, I'd ask that addendum AA, or exhibit AA be admitted for all purposes. No objection. No. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Exhibit AA is admitted as well. Thank you. And now I'd like to provide this court a brief background of petitioner's life history. On or about July 12, 2016, the California Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians issued vocational nurse license number VN195235 to petitioner. On March 10, 2014, the board filed an accusation number VN-2011-1324 against petitioner's vocational nurse license. This accusation alleged that petitioner's license was subject to disciplinary action under code section 2878F, a conviction of a crime substantially related to qualifications, functions, or duties of a vocational nurse. 
and 2878A, unprofessional conduct, and 2878J, acts involving dishonesty, in that petitioner suffered three com criminal convictions and failed to notify the board of those convictions. On December 4, 2007, was convicted on one count of driving without a valid license, a misdemeanor. Then on August 26, 2011, petitioner entered a plea of no con no contest and was convicted on one count of petty theft and one count of battery, both misdemeanors on the basis. The basis for this conviction was that on or about August 24, 2011, petitioner stole nylons and tights from Macy's. When stopped by store security, petitioner struck one of those sec um, security agents with an open hand and kicked the agents multiple times as they tried to arrest her. Lastly, on March 14, 2011, petitioner entered a plea of nolo contendere and was convicted of petty theft, a misdemeanor. The basis of this conviction was that on or about February 14, 2012, petitioner stole nail polish and makeup and underwear from Sears. In addition, petitioner was also arrested on July 30, 2011 for consuming merchandise from Target in the Glendale Galleria and exited the store without paying for it. On October 30th, 2014, this case was heard in front of an administrative law judge. An administrative law judge at the time of hearing found that petitioner was too new in her recovery and still under criminal probation at the time of hearing to be have, to have access to a license. An administrative law judge found petitioner's license should be revoked with costs for investigation and enforcement to be paid upon reinstatement of her license in the amount of four thousand five hundred and forty seven dollars and fifty cents on may 4th 2015 the board adopted a corrected proposed decision revoking petitioner's license and ordering cost on june 12th 2015 petitioner's petition for reconsideration was denied on june 13th 2015 the board's final decision and order became effective in this case revoking petitioner's license Petitioner has an outstanding cost for investigation and enforcement of her case in the amount of $4,547.50. On or around April 22nd, 2020, Petitioner filed a petition for reinstatement of her vocational nurse license. Because the burden is on Petitioner, I have no further statements, but we reserve the right to question Petitioner. Thank you. Ms. Doherty. All right, Mr. Thank you so much, Ms. Your opportunity to present petitioner's case. Um, as I mentioned earlier, on you're welcome to start with an opening statement, um, not mandatory though, whatever you wish, um, and then uh, we'll have your client testify. Go ahead, sir, uh, however you wish to proceed. <laughs> and you may want to unmute yourself. There we go. I can this go. seems to go on mute or on, it goes muted on its own. I didn't do anything. <laughs> No, no apologies needed. It might be that it, it's muting you uh, because to avoid background noise. That's fine. Uh, I'll make sure to keep an eye. If I see your your lips are moving, but I don't hear you, I will let you. Well, I think I have the uh, hang of it now just because it turns red if it's on mute. So anyway, a brief open statement. Uh, approximately, approximately seven years have elapsed since the underlying offenses that led to the revocation. Uh, those offenses have been expunged. Arlene has completed probation and payment of fines and community service in connection with those offenses. There are no prior criminal or disciplinary matters and there, there are no subsequent criminal or disciplinary matters other than the one at issue. Uh, Arlene is ready and able to pay the cost assessment should she be reinstated. And I would like to bring to your attention in particular the document at page A011, which is a letter from Arlene's psychiatrist, Dr. Samia, which sets forth Dr. Samia's assessment of Arlene's current state, state of uh, capability in uh, pursuing a career as a vocational nurse. Um, there are a number of other letters uh, in the packet, and um, there are also in the addendum AA, there are certificates of completion of, very, of various courses and seminars that Arlene has taken to improve her uh, ability to, to pursue a career 
as a vocational nurse, and I will ask her about those uh, shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Is it your desire then to have your client testify next? Yes. All right, Ms. Tariko, um, I will welcome you to the virtual witness stand. If you could raise your right hand and I will swear you in. Do you solemnly state under penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you so much. And ma'am, if you get asked any question that's unclear, vague, ambiguous, whether it's from your own attorney or by board members, just let us know and we can make sure it gets re rephrased and re-clarified. If, uh, if you do answer a question, then we will assume you understood the question. Fair enough? Okay, that's fine. Right. And then before you get going, if you could just state your full name for the record and spell it for us, please. Arlene Monique Tarico, uh, first name A-R-L-E-N-E, -E, uh, middle name Monique, M-O-N-I-Q-U-E, last name Tarico, T-O-R-R-I-C-O. Thank you so much, Ms. Tarico. All right, Mr. Cohen, your witness. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Arlene, I'd like to start with asking you what you have done since these offenses occurred several years ago, what sort of work you have been involved with, educational efforts on your part, psychotherapy, that sort of thing. Um, yes, I have been working full-time as a medical assistant. I am currently working with Burbank Urgent Med. I earned a diploma to work as a medical assistant on July of 2015. I earned a venipuncture certification on uh, August of 2015. I have completed 30 uh, contact hours of CME credit. I earned three contact hours at work uh, by completing 10 courses on MedTrainer, an online, an online training program for Oncology Institute staff. and. I have consistently attended psychotherapy sessions with Dr. Mikael. This started on September of 2013 and is ongoing to the present time. Um, this has allowed me to recognize my responsibility and what happened. Um, it's motivated me to become a better person and brought me out of my shell and resulted in my rehabilitation. All right. Um what positive changes have you made in your life since these incidents? Well, before I did not have a primary care doctor and now I see the doctor yearly for a physical. I did not go to church. Uh, now I try to go every other Sunday. I also have learned to pray for myself and others in need and for God's forgiveness. Um, I avoided being around friends. Now I reach out to friends. I was not working at all. Now I work full time as a medical assistant. I get along with my mother. Um, I have made, I made an effort to communicate with her and I know how to avoid arguments and deal with conflict. All right. Uh, could you describe any changes in attitude that you have? I don't regard myself as a victim. I feel remorseful for what I did. I realize I can cope with situations that may otherwise trigger my anger. I have a more positive attitude about life, about possibilities, and regaining my credentials and about helping people. All right, there is some mention of a mood disorder in Dr. Samia's letter. Do you still have a, a mood disorder? I no longer have symptoms, uh, thanks to the long-term therapy that I've had with Dr. Mikhail. And for my own persistence in moving forward, I have not had any episodes of depression or anger for seven years. Uh, how has your treatment with Dr. Samia helped you? Without Dr. Mikhail, I would not. Be, I would not have started my road to uh, rehabilitation. As I mentioned earlier, I'm getting along with my mother, um, reaching out to friends, working full time, going to church. I thank Dr. Mikhail for her guidance. Arlene, do you have any insight into what motivated you to shoplift? 
It was motivated by anger and also gave me a sense of relief. I have benefited from this insight because I no longer have an, any compulsion to commit any type of offenses. I want to help people not engage in self-destructive behavior. All right. Uh, could we look at the uh, various diplomas that are at? Um, yes. Uh, uh, the first I have is... Uh, just a second. So, uh, Your Honor, this is Addendum AA. And Thank you so much. I'm, Arlene, I'm really not quite sure what these first documents are to do with insurance. Could you explain what those are part of the record? I think you added them. Yeah, that was an error. I sent them by accident to Helen. That's not a part of the... Um, okay. The, so let's go... It's supposed to be added on. So let's start with uh, page AA008 and go through these uh, briefly, each item to briefly explain how you earned these certificates. Okay, uh, the first is a completion of a medical assistant program at Northwest College from 2015. The second is Veni puncture certification uh, from 2015 as well. And uh, Northwest College, electronic health medical record certification. Uh, the next form is an unofficial transcript from Glendale Community College. It shows the courses that I've taken, how many units they're worth, and the grades. Uh, the next is a CPR card. It expires on the 2022. The following is a form of um, 15 contact hours for the central nervous system. The following is 10 contact hours for gastro gastroesophageal reflux disease. The following is five contact hours for antibiotic review. And following that is proof of completion for uh, combating Medicare Part C and D fraud, waste and abuse. Uh, it was issued through my work. And the following is just a signature that I completed that course. Following that, airborne and droplet disease transmission is another certification that I earned at work. Uh, cultural competen competencies for healthcare professionals follows that. Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act is another course that was completed. Hazardous Communication and Chemical Safety Standards. Unlawful Harassment for Managers is the last one. Following that is 240 hours completed for community service. I couldn't find the other form. There was more hours completed for community service, but that's proof of one of the um, one of them. And following that is the three um, expungement for the driving on the suspended license and the two misdemeanor charges for petty theft. All right. Thank you. Um, could you please discuss any new or different social social relationship relationships uh, from what exist, existed at the time of the commission of these offenses? Um, as far as that, uh, everything's pretty much the same. I have the same friends. Um, there, there have been no changes. Well, uh, with socially. I think what I'm trying to get at is um, your interaction with other people before you started therapy and your interaction with people in the present time. What, what kind of a different attitude or approach <laughs> to relationships you have now compared to before? Okay. Um, I don't regard myself as a victim. I feel remorseful for what I did. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I already went through that. Um, excuse me. I think we went over that. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, did you tend to isolate yourself before the... Yes, I did. Often. I would stay in my room. I stayed in my room for many years. 
So do you consider yourself to be more outgoing now or what? Yes, I'm more extroverted. I like to start conversations with people. I'm not um, locking myself in my room. All right. Uh, do you regard your family life to be stable at this point in time? And uh, what do you do to contribute to the uh, family duties and obligations? Uh, yes, I help my mother by doing grocery shopping, uh, washing dishes, cleaning up around the house and contribute half the rent every other month. And my relationship with my mother is great, whereas before we had conflict a lot of the time. All right. Now, uh, are you able to pay the cost assessment should you be reinstated? Yes, I am. I have the full cost of recovery. Is there anything else you wanted to add, Arlene? Uh, no, not at this time. All right, I have nothing further at this time, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Uh, Ms. Doherty, do you have questions for Ms. Rico? I do, thank you. Ms. Tariko, you have multiple convictions for petty theft, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you had just said earlier that the motivation for those acts were due to anger or and relief. Is that correct? I couldn't hear you. Would you repeat, please? You stated earlier that the behind those convictions or those act engaging in those acts was due to anger and or relief is that correct yes and can you explain to me what triggered that anger or why it made you feel a sense of relief well the anger was triggered by the fact that i had not been emotionally coping with anger properly so um by the time I got to that age, which was, I was around 25, I was really having trouble um, emotionally. Uh, the anger drew me into a depression and it numbed me. I wasn't able to um, realize what I was doing sometimes or notice noticed things that were going around, around me or my surroundings. And at the time you engaged in these acts, did you understand that you were violating the law? Yes, I did. And did, at that point in time, did you not think the law applied to you? Yeah, I did feel that the yeah. law applied to me. And did you understand that the harm that you were causing um, the public by shoplifting? Yes, I do. And can you explain to me what that harm was? Uh, well, I'm taking something that doesn't belong to me and um, it's, I didn't pay for it. So that's the harm that it's doing. I and mean, pe people are employed there and they, they're getting paid to work there. And I'm affecting that by taking something that doesn't belong to me and I'm not paying for it. And as a vocational nurse, you understand that there is, that patients put a lot of trust in nurses, correct? Yes, I do. And, and what assurances can you provide the board that you would never um, steal or cause harm to a patient? Well, I've been working with patients since 2015, and I don't think about stealing from patients. That's just not something they're... There, they trust us. Um, I, I would never victimize a, a patient. It's just not a part of my character. And do you currently have any criminal or civil charges pending against you? No. And do you have any other convictions that the board is unaware of? No, ma'am. And you stated that you currently are a medical assistant, correct? Yes. Can you explain to me what those job duties entail? Right now I'm working at an right. urgent care clinic and I'm doing mostly COVID testing. Uh, most of it is patient care, talking to the patients, um, giving them medication, 
doing vital signs. And why do you want your license reinstated? I want my license reinstated because I want to practice as a nurse. Um, I'm practicing now as a medical assistant. I'd like to do something more. I'd like more job responsibility. I'd like to have um, more patient contact. I'd like to, that's, that's it. And besides the continuing education courses that you provided the board today, are there any other classes or courses that you've taken that you want the board to be aware of? No. And if your license was to be reinstated, are you prepared to sit for the NCLEX? Yes, ma'am. And if your license was reinstated, would you be able to comply with um, probationary terms? Yes. Yeah. And you understand when your license, if it is reinstated, is put on a probationary status, that there are fees associated to that? Yes. Yes. And where do you currently live by yourself? Uh, no, I'm living with my mother. And you stated that your you have the same social relationships as to when you had these, when these convictions, correct? Yes, yes. yes. And if you could help me, I know you touched on it a little bit, understand how these relationships are different that they would help from engaging in um, prior conduct. As far as my relationships with them, they're the same. The only difference is, is that I pushed my friends away and everyone away from me. So I isolated myself. So I think that's what happened. That's the reason why I got in trouble because I didn't have anybody to talk to. And if you ever feel like you're isolating yourself, do you have a plan in place um, or individuals to turn to a support system? Yes, I do. I have my mother here. And I have my and friends that call me. Okay. And you stated that you no longer have symptoms of this mood disorder, correct? Yes. And if you start to feel symptoms again, do you and your treating psychiatrist have a plan in place? Would you repeat the question one more time? If you start to feel symptoms of your mood disorder again, do you and your treating psychiatrist have a plan in place or action prepared or steps to take? Well, with my mood disorder, it takes a long time to progress and become very unbearable. So the medication that I've been on now, um, if I stop taking it for one or two days, I start feeling a little bit of the symptoms so it's not something that i want to do because uh, it's physically debilitating as well so um it's very uncomfortable um, it's it's not a state of health that i want to be or anybody i think would want to be in thank you and as part of one of your criminal probations you were ordered to take an anger management class correct Anger management class, you said? Correct. Yes. Yes. And did you take that class? They accepted the um, appointments with Dr. Mikhail because the anger management classes were very expensive and I couldn't afford it. I think they were $100 for each appointment. And would you say you have an anger management problem? No, I don't believe so, but I do believe that I need to start therapy soon. And have you ever, on that note, have you ever received therapy? Yes, I have. Yes. And when did you stop therapy? Uh, the therapy was uh, not, 
after I've been seeing the doctor, but it was something I did on my own before the the convictions. And as a part of your probation conditions, if the board you to receive a type of therapy, would you be agreeable to that? Definitely, I would. I have nothing further for petitioner at this time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Dougherty. All right, now um, I will turn it over to the board members for questions. And um, Dr. Mountain, just so you know, I have everyone listed alphabetically except for Dr. Mountain and Mr. Durking as president and vice president first. And what I intend to do, unless there's an objection, is to st go down that list and then for the next petition, I'll go in reverse order so that it's not the same people asking questions the first time each time around. So is that acceptable to you, Dr. Mountain? Absolutely. That sounds excellent. Thank you so much. Perfect. All right. So then I do have you on the list first. So Dr. Mountain, uh, you go first this time. Next time you'll be you'll be at the end. Um, any questions for Rita? Yes, thank the board you so moderator. Real quick before we continue, I'd like to check to make sure that Ms. Turner's microphone is working. Ms. Turner? Okay, from the telephone, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, maybe I should... Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. All right, Dr. Mountain, whenever you're ready, um, if you have questions for Ms. Tarico. <laughs> I do have just a couple, and Ms. Tarico, uh, thank you for sharing your story. Um, Thank you for having me. Things to uh, show rehabilitation that I'm just interested in. Um, will you continue to work at the same place you are currently working? No, they don't have a position for an LVN, so I'd have to apply at another urgent care that does have LVNs. And and is your intention to stay in urgent care? Is this the population that you're interested in? Yes, I am. And have you thought about uh, a place that you might be interested in should your license be reinstated? Yes, I have. I've thought of UCLA and CAC. Excellent. Okay, thank you so much. I don't have any further questions. Thank you, Dr. Mountain. Um, Mr. Durking, do you have questions for Mr. Rico? Just briefly, uh, Your Honor, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Rico, you indicated that um, one of the insights that you have uh, from therapy is, and I think this is a quote, you no longer have episodes of depression or anger in the past seven years. Was that correct? Yes. Well, my, my question is, uh, clearly, there are things that irritate us or, or bother us. And like, right. what do you mean by an episode of anger? Because I think it, it's just really fundamentally part of human nature to have Right, I think what uh, what I'm <laughs> what I'm referring to is probably rage, you know, or it's just uncontrollable, and I I can't control the anger, so I think that's what it's probably the rage that I haven't okay. had an issue with. Yeah, thank you very much. So, so you're saying is your anger uh, issues, as it were, are under better control? Would yes. Okay, That's so correct. let's draw your attention to your uh, previous convictions, you know, especially the one in uh, 2011. Yes. Can you, can you describe how uh, your anger issues, as it were, actually led you to, to engage in, in the uh, particular conduct for which you were convicted? Uh, the battery yeah, I think you're talking about? Yeah, yes, in other words. Um... Yes, I, I believe I was paranoid when I entered the the Macy's. I was also going through paranoia and hallucinating. So um, there was one of the attendants there that was looking at me and I don't know, it just made me very upset. So uh, I took the nylons and I think it was in front of her when she turned and then i proceeded to leave the um the macy's so i think uh she told someone or the security and i thought i was gonna leave and she wasn't gonna say anything and um that's when 
the security tackled me down from behind. So I didn't, I didn't see her coming. So I didn't know if it was somebody else grabbing my bag. So that's how okay. that happened. Okay, thank you. So are you testifying that there's some underlying um, internal or emotional situation that actually gave rise to you uh, engaging in, in the, uh, I, I guess it was a battery, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were saying it was battery, but she was fine. I didn't, she was just complaining about scratches. So I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't really agree with what they wrote in, in the report. So are, are you denying that you actually strike the security personnel? No, I did strike her. I'm not denying that I didn't do that. Well, what part are you disagreeing with? The characterization of that or? Yeah, I, I believe it's the, the way they wrote it down. They okay, explained it in the report. Okay, what specifically are you just? Uh, I'm gonna pull it up right now. And Mr. Rico, this is Judge Van Royen. When you yes. when you do, just let us know which document you're referencing um, by the, the the page number in the packet, so we all know what you're looking at. Okay. Um. Okay, well, now that I read it, it sounds true. I think I was probably reading it ahead of time and being kind of defensive, like I wouldn't do that, but I, I did do that. Okay, thank uh -huh. you very much. Uh, Your Honor, I have no other questions. Thank you, Mr. Durking. Um, Ms. Amazola de Herrera, do you have any questions for um, the petitioner? Hi, yes, um, good morning. Um, thank you so much for coming today and telling us our, your story. Um, I think it's really important for people to be able to um, say the words out loud, what happened and, and, and explain their, their point of view. I only have one question and that is, uh, I saw the many classes that you took and I would like to understand, or maybe you can help me um, identify uh, which of these classes or courses you felt helped you um, understand the ethics and the problem behind um, uh, the behavior you were engaging and how that can impact your patients. Um, um, I'm a public member and my role here is to protect the public. Yes. So I want to make sure that if we were to provide you with the opportunity to serve as an LVN in the future, that that our patient the your patients will be um, safe. Okay, so okay. the one course that I can bring up is my health education class. And there the teacher explained to us that um, Usually, if you get a misdemeanor at, when you're in your adult age, that people are not going to be as forgiving as if you were when, when you're younger. So um, that kind of helped me understand the gravity of what I did and that um, I shouldn't have done it. And I should have thought twice before I took something from a department store. How old were you when this happened? I was turning 30 or I believe 30 or 31. And how how has this this statement about whether you're young or old um, helped you understand the gravity of patients give their they put their health in your hands? Right. And and oftentimes their property might be in your hands too because yes 
So I'm just trying to understand um, how these courses or the work you've done has has helped you understand the gravity of the of the problem, even though it's a misdemeanor or mm -hmm. even though it's considered petty theft. There is some gravity into the the behavior. Right. And at work, we are dealing with patients all the time. Um, I was working before in an oncology practice and yeah, they do trust us with their belongings because some of them are receiving chemotherapy. So, and, and they're very sick. So it makes me feel very sad that somebody could victimize somebody like this. And, you know, I talk to a lot of them. They're like my family. So I don't see myself trying to victimize somebody that's sick or, you know, they they explain to us how they're feeling they they share with us their struggle their their life so I, I i don't have the heart to victimize somebody like that that's what i've learned working as a medical assistant thank you so much uh i appreciate uh, the thought about humanizing patients and and their belongings and their story thank you that will okay. be all right, uh, Ms. Carpenter, do you have any questions for Ms. Tarico? Yes, thank you. Uh, Your Honor, I had a quick request. Could our petitioners please be reminded to allow the board members to complete their questions prior to uh, answering? Absolutely, thank you for bringing that to attention. It's this uh, this uh, goes to, to everyone, uh, in, as well as the board members, please make sure to uh, let the board member or whoever's asking the question finish the question completely before you start answering. It's very easy and normal conversation to anticipate what a question is asking and then just jump in. Um, but again, it, it makes for a very difficult record um, later on to understand what was asked if you do that. So wait till the question's completely done before you start your answer. And likewise, uh, board members and other people asking questions, make sure you wait till the petitioner is completely done with her answer before you start following up with your next question. Thank you so much for bringing that to uh, our attention. Ms. Carpenter, do you have any questions for Mr. Rico? Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Rico, are you currently seeing your psychiatrist on a regular basis? Yes, ma'am. Um, well, actually, no, I've been doing phone calls because of COVID, but before I was seeing her every three months. I guess seeing is a relative term. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Um, so you, um, do you plan to continue this regimen of wellness with the medications and the psychiatrist? Uh, of course, yeah. Uh, hopefully I won't have to take the medications for the rest of my life, but as long as um, I I feel, yeah, I should continue. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Rico. You're welcome. Mr. Hill, do you have any questions for Mr. Rico? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Rico, thank you very much for telling us your side and helping us understand um, your situation. Uh, I have no questions at this time, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Um, Mr. Maxi, do you have any questions for Mr. Rico? Yes, uh, good morning, Mr. Rico, for um, providing um, this, this interesting story of one of mental health um, challenges that we face in this country. Um, my, my only question is, um, what, Ms. Rico, do you feel um, will be your biggest challenge moving forward? Um, if you were to be um, readmitted to be an LVN? My biggest challenge would probably be um, the information. Uh, it was a challenge for me before, just taking in a lot of information and balancing my life. Um, I think that's probably going to be a challenge, but I think it's a challenge for most nurses when they're starting. Okay, no further questions for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Norton, do you have any questions for the petitioner? Yes, I do have some questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Tarico, 
Um, you testified that you have no current mood disorders. Um, but then, as you were describing what happened, and especially describing the incident in 2011, you described that when you went into the store, you were hallucinating. So I need to understand, and you've mentioned medications. Yes. Um, and the need to stay on the medications. So is it, is it actually your testimony that you don't, don't have a mood that your testimony that the medication is is um, allowing you to be a productive member of society um, because of the mood disorder. Yes, the medication is helping me become a productive person in society because of the mood disorder. And the hallucinations happen after a long period of not getting any medi medication treatment. Okay. And you are in regular contact with your MD and getting lab tests to ensure that there's an appropriate level in your system and this medication regimen, correct? Yes, yes, I have a primary care doctor. Okay. You also mentioned that you need to start therapy soon. Can you explain that comment, please? Yes, I said that because that's what my primary care doctor told me and I, completely agree with her. So I feel like it's time for me to start. I didn't before because I felt like I would be sharing unnecessary information with the therapist. So I think now that, you know, my mood is controlled, I'm not going to be just um, giving her a lot of personal information that won't help me grow or may um, hinder my confidence. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and your primary care, who is prescribing you your medication for your disorder? Is it your primary care or is it a psychiatrist? Or is your primary care a psychiatrist? Um, no, my psychiatrist is prescribing the medication and I have a different doctor for uh, primary care. Okay, so you're seeing two doctors? Yes. Okay. Um, Thank you. Your packet says that you, I'm assuming that you've changed employers since you started this packet. It takes a while to get actually to the board. Yes. Um, so when did you start working at the urgent care clinic? In September, September 21st. Okay. And your letters of reference are all from 2019 and they're all from your previous employers. Did, did you? Ask anyone that you're currently working with to give you a letter of reference. I haven't known them that long, so no, I haven't had a chance to get a letter of reference from anybody. Okay, and why is it that you changed employment? Because I was looking to work in urgent care and I've learned that I really like to draw blood and hopefully as an LVN, I get to start IVs. So uh, I've learned that that's one of my passions. So um, that's why I decided to work in an urgent care. Okay, I totally understand that. I love to draw blood myself <laughs> and start IVs. <laughs> it sounds funny, but is a patient. This is you want somebody that really likes to do those things. <laughs> you don't want somebody to think, "Oh, that's terrible." Um, okay. Um, I, that's it. Thank you very much for your candor and all of your explanations. I have no further questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Norton. Um, Ms. Rooks, do you have any questions for Mr. Rico? Yes, thank you. Um, hello, Mr. Rico. I, I really appreciate your bravery and um, uh, being here today because I believe the first step of rehabilitation is owning and being accountable for what we do, right? And so, um, my fellow board members, though, they've ans asked you questions that I, too, was a little concerned or and or confused um, with some of your testimony. But I do have one question. Um, when you would go into the stores to commit, you know, the crimes or the theft. I any of your friends with you? No, I was alone. Okay, because my concern would be if you would still 
hang out with those same friends because sometimes, you know, a lot <laughs> of them, right? We we hang out with the same crowd and 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 that would right. be a concern for me and your rehabilitation. But since you you didn't and you did that alone, um, that's a good thing. So we don't have to worry about you uh, um, backsliding because if they didn't stop the behavior and you're trying to rehabilitate, then it's not gonna, uh, your, your real rehabilitation is not gonna be uh, successful. So I think that that's all, because like I said, my fellow board members have um, asked you questions that I too was concerned about. And I wanna thank you again for your bravery because it is very hard. Um, to tell our story and especially uh, a story of mental health, like one of my fellow board members mentioned earlier. So I appreciate you today, okay? Thank, Thank you, you so you. much, Tara. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Rubalcava, you're next. Do you have any questions for Ms. Tarico? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, hi, Ms. Tarico. Thank you for coming here today and talking with us. Thank you for having me. I did have one question. Um, when I was reading the uh, petition for reinstatement, you mentioned uh, stigma surrounding mental health treatment and medications. Yes. Do you still feel that stigma is surrounding your treatment today? No. Can you tell me why your opinion has changed? Um, yes, because I did have some people around me that uh, believed that there was nothing wrong with me. So um, once those people were out of my life, then I was able to get the treatment and they really thought that I shouldn't be on any medication and I was doing the wrong thing by taking medication. So it was just one or two people and um, I would speak to them often and during the period that I was isolating myself and um, that's, that's it. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. No further questions. Thank you. And finally, Ms. Turner, do you have any questions for Ms. Tarico? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Um, good morning, Ms. Tarico. Good morning. Uh, good morning. So um, first, I want to thank you for being prepared, coming in with your expungements on the uh, underlying <laughs> criminal convictions. Um, and they do appear to be more than seven years old. And uh, I believe you've testified that there you have no convictions since those last convictions. That's true. Okay. Um, one of the issues that I'm concerned about is your the impact of the medication. So are you still taking the Risperidol and Depakote? Oh, no, no. That was earlier on when I was trying to figure out what medications uh, would work best for me. And that's not one. Those, those two are not medications that I'm taking right now. Okay. What medications are you on right now? I'm taking Latuda and Triliptal. Triliptal? Triliptal, yes. Okay. And um, can you uh, speak to me about some of the side effects of those? And I, I'm concerned about whether or not they could potentially impact your ability to provide patient care. Right, um, the side effects, uh, they have me take the Latuda at night because it does make me drowsy. So um, I sleep the drowsy, I sleep through the drowsiness. So that's at night and the uh, trilip, or yes, the triliptal I take in the morning. I don't really have any side effects to that. I've been working. I've been fine. Okay. Nobody has mentioned anything about my mood or. And so, what? How what the situation would be if you had to work at night? Uh, would you switch? There's the another time? option. There's a medication uh, that's that I was on before that didn't give me any side effects. Um, I don't know why my psychiatrist decided that I take the Latuda, but um, I forget what the name of the other one was, but yeah, for some reason she believes that I should be on the Latuda. So I, I'm just taking it because she told me I should take it and that it'd be better for me. Okay. So, but you feel that you're perfectly capable of have, being focused 
and able to provide great patient care, even under the effects of the medication that you're currently on? Yes, when I wake up, I don't have any side effects from the Latuda. So I do have a letter from one of my coworkers that says that, you know, she believes that I'm fast paced and I'm, uh, I help in the office and I reach out, I go above and beyond to help people and help the patients. Mm -hmm. There's a letter that's been included in, uh, in the packet. Okay. And you're still seeing Dr. Samir, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. Mikhail. Michaela. Yes. Are you still seeing her? Okay. And so it, her letterhead says she's with the, the uh, health, but then her address is on Vine Street. Is that? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's where I went for the appointments. Okay. Is she, are you, is the county of Los Angeles providing you the services or? Yes. Yes. Ms. Tariqa, sorry, this is. Sorry, this is Judge Van Royen. Again, uh, the two of you are speaking over each other a lot. Ms. Tariqa, oh, let I'm Ms. Sorry. Turner finish her question before you answer. Sorry, Ms. Turner, if you could please re-ask that last question. Thank you. Okay. okay, yes. So I was wondering if the County of Los Angeles it is providing Ms. Uh, Dr. Samir um, to give you the services, or is Dr. Samir seeing you in her private practice? I believe it's the city. I did have insurance, so I am not sure right now what what's going on with the um, insurance part of. But yeah, I, it's the county of Los Angeles. Okay, and um, I think last question. You said that one of the triggers for your engaging in this uh, behavior in the past was some conflict that you have with your mother and yes. you're still living with your mother now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so how are you navigating um, that relationship with her or whatever the issue is between you and her that caused you, you know, to engage in that criminal behavior? Um, yes, I did mention earlier that we are getting along and I am I'm communicating with her a lot more than I did before instead of trying to avoid her and um, ignore her feelings. Okay. All right. I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Turner. Um, let me just circle back to counsel real quick. Um, Ms. Uh, um, Let's see, Ms. Dalkerty, do you have any uh, questions in light of the board members' questions? I do have one, thank you. Ms. Tirico, you had stated um, one of the board members asked you regarding the conviction, the conviction involving battery um, triggered that, and you said that sh the employee was looking at you and you were paranoid. If a patient gives you a look or gives you concern that they're unhappy with your care, how would you respond to that? Really communicate with them and ask them if they're okay. And if a patient is unhappy with your services, how would you respond? I would tell them if they'd be happier to have someone else um, assist them if I wasn't, if I was making them upset. I have nothing further. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dougherty. And Mr. Cohen, did you have any follow-up questions? Yes, Your Honor. First of all, um, I'd like to point out to the board Exhibit A016. This is a letter of character reference from a colleague, a nurse named Miss Burrell. And uh, part of the letter says that Arlene has shown the ability to establish excellent rapport with her coworkers, including nurses, providers, and other office staff. She is highly competent, well-organized, fast paced and an excellent team player. She always goes above and beyond her job 
job descriptions, and is always willing to help others, including myself. Also, Your Honor, I'd like to point out that letter from Dr. Samia um, says that Arlene is cooperative in treatment and has significantly improved as a result of responsibility, keeping scheduled appointments, accountability, and psychotherapy treatment. She has established safeguards to prevent repetition of any criminal behavior. So I think that's very important, that last <laughs> phrase there, that Arlene has established safeguards to prevent repetition of any criminal behavior. Also that Arlene has demonstrated rehabilitation and stability to be a suitable candidate for licensure. Now, uh, I'd like to point out that the criminal activity occurred prior to Arlene seeing Dr. Samia, and she has been regularly seeing Dr. Samia since 2013. Also, Your Honor, if I can interject for a second. Yes, Ms. Doherty. I just would like to clarify for the record, are we still on examination of the petitioner or are we doing... I, I, yeah, I, I, I was a little confused by that too. Uh, first, Mr. Cohen, it almost sounded a bit like a closing argument to me. I asked, do you are you do you have any further questions for your client in light of the board members' questions or Ms. Doherty's questions? Yes, I'm so sorry. I thought it was closing argument. <laughs> I no, apologize. No problem at all. Any any questions for your own client? Uh, yes. First of all, Arlene, um, if you did have to work at night, uh, uh, I take it you would need a an adjustment in your medication. Is that correct? Yes. And you would, what would you do to, to, to get that accomplished? I would speak with Dr. Mikhail about switching to the alternative medication, which I can't remember right now, but there's one that does, I, doesn't give me any side effects at all. All right. And uh, the incident at Macy and the other occurrences, those were prior to your seeking help from Dr. Samia, is that correct? Yes. Um, all right, I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. All right, and then let me just check uh, before we close the record. Um, did you uh, did you have any additional uh, documents that we haven't discussed yet, just out of abundance of caution? I just want to make sure. No, I do not. All right, perfect. And uh, do you have any additional witness testimony today? No. All right. And then I, I believe you sort of gave uh, a closing argument earlier on. Normally, I don't allow a very lengthy argument just because, uh, again, the board has a fairly impacted schedule today. But if you have two minutes or so, uh, if you'd like to make a closing argument, I'll allow you. Yes. Well, please consider what I said a moment ago as part of a closing argument. And in addition, the only other thing I want to point out to the board is that on January 20, 2015, in the administrative law judge's decision of that date, which was almost six years ago, the judge stated, first of all, quote, respondent failed to present any testimony or documentary evidence from, from a medical professional to establish that she is fully recovered from the diagnosed mood disorder to ensure that she will not pose any potential harm to the public or to the patients, close quote. That was at paragraph 13 of the judge's decision. And in contrast to today, she has provided documentary evidence from Dr. Samia and her own testimony. The other part that I wanted to point out in that same decision is also at paragraph 13, in which it is stated, quote, Respondent is obviously serious about her recovery, and she is to be commended for her efforts to regain her health. 
She is now under the care of a psychiatrist, testified that she has had good results with therapy and medication, and appears to be committed to remaining in therapy and taking her medications, close quote. So I think that's also interesting because it was several years ago, and uh, she still is serious about her recovery, and I think you could say that she has achieved rehabilitation and regained her health, particularly her mental health and her physical health. I have nothing further, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Cohen. All right, then at this point, the House concludes the petition hearing in this particular matter. The record is closed and the case is submitted for decision. And then a written decision will be issued um, at some later point. Um, we are off the record. Um, Dr. Mountain, um, are we ready to proceed to the next petition or does the board, would the board like to take a brief break? I, I defer to you. Um, why don't we go ahead and let the board have a 10 minute break and then we'll reconvene uh, at 11.25, I mean 10.25. 10.25, thank you Dr. Mountain. We'll see everyone back at 10.25. Thank Thanks. you. Excuse me, uh, Dr. Mountain. This is Alita Carpenter. Yes. Um, I have had my hand up for some time. Um, I didn't. I didn't know whether I should break into the attorney's um, close or whether I should interrupt. Oh, Ms. Doctor. Carpenter, I'm sorry. I, I'm unable to see your video. That's why I couldn't see. I couldn't see your your hand up. No, my hand is my hand is up on the side that has right. the uh, listed. And, uh, it doesn't show up for us. It doesn't show up for me either. Um, perhaps you could ask if any board members have additional questions before you um, have the closing argument presented. Sure, no problem. I can do that. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll see everyone back at 1025. All right, is, is Dr. Mo uh, Mountain on the line? I, I don't want to get started until um, she's yes, back. I am here. Oh, fantastic. All right, are you ready for me to just proceed to the next petition? Absolutely, thank you so much, Judge Van Ryan. Absolutely, you're welcome. And again, uh, Ms. Carpenter, I, I so apologize for that last matter. Um, so just so all the board members know, I can't, I can't see most of you physically and I don't see the little hands that are put up uh, in the box. So what I'm going to try and do going forward is at the end, make sure if there's additional questions, I'll try and point that out. If it slips my mind, please don't hesitate to speak up. I, I will take no offense whatsoever. We're all juggling a lot of balls here. So I'm, I, I'll try my best to remember, but don't hesitate to speak up. Um, Thank you, Your Honor. I realize. <laughs> Thank Sorry, you. go ahead, Ms. Carpenter. Sorry. <laughs> I realize the difficulty of this, but thank you. No, no, it, it was no, no harm intended. But thank you for thank you for bringing it to my attention. And um, the only other thing I would say is, please make sure that we're all muted before, uh, unless you're actually speaking. And I have to remember that myself too. Um, it'll just reduce the background noise we have. Um, and then, if anyone, if any board member needs to take a break that's unscheduled, please let me know that as soon as possible too, because we need to make sure everyone hears all the testimony if they're going to be deliberating on a case. So, um, just again, speak up if for some reason you need to take an unscheduled break. All right, um, then, are we ready to go on the record? Are we recording? Your Honor, Mike. We are. Thank you. All right, and and I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna announce the case, Mr. Mr. Rooney, and then I'll have you state your appearances, etc. Just if you'll just hold on for one second, thanks. All right, we are on the record before the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians for the Department of Consumer Affairs, State of California. Uh, we're reviewing several petitions for reinstatement today. The next one, we're going slightly off out of order in the uh, on the calendar. The next one we're hearing is the petition for reinstatement filed by Christopher Byers. This is OAH case number 2020100577. My name is Wim Van Royen. I'm an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings for the state of California, and I've been assigned to preside over the matter today. Today is November 19th, 2020. The petition hearings were set to start at 9 a.m. It's now approximately 10.28 a.m. 
We're conducting this matter via WebEx video conference due to the COVID-19 public health crisis and the governor's executive order N-29-20 dated March 17th, 2020. And I will let the record reflect that we have taken a roll call of the board members previously, and we do have a quorum of the board present today uh, to hear the petition. May I please have an appearance by the Deputy Attorney General, please? Good morning, I'm Caitlin Dougherty, Deputy Attorney General. I'm appearing on behalf of the Attorney General pursuant to Business and Profession Code Section 2878.7 and Government Code Section 11522 the people of the state of California. I'm here to assist the administrative judge and the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians. In fact, my role is not adversarial, but is intended to protect the public interest. I'm here to ensure that the administrative law judge and the board have adequate information from which to make a decision today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dougherty. And then uh, appearances on behalf of the petitioner, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Michael Rooney on behalf of Christopher Byers. Good morning to you, Mr. Rooney, and good morning to you, Mr. Byers. Um, Mr. Byers, can you hear me clearly as well? I can, sir. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you so much. All right. Um, in terms of how we'll proceed today, first, the Deputy Attorney General will uh, introduce the petition packet and materials and then provide us with an orientation uh, of the basically the history of this case and um, and the documents. And after that, um, the petitioner will have the right to make a presentation under oath to explain why he believes the petition should be granted. And Mr. Rooney, um, you will have the ability, if you wish, to make an, an opening statement first, followed by um, your client's testimony or any other witnesses you, you seek to call. Your, uh, the petitioner, as well as those witnesses, would be subject to questioning by the Deputy Attorney General and the board members. Today, the board is primarily concerned with the rehabilitation that the petitioner may have engaged in. Um, the board members have had the benefit of reading the petition packet, and so it's not necessary to repeat everything that's in there, but you can certainly highlight or emphasize any portions you deem appropriate. Then after the hearing today, the board will go into a closed session to deliberate. Uh, the petitioner will not receive a decision today, but will receive a written decision in the mail sometime in the future. Any questions before we get started, Mr. Rooney? Uh, no, Your Honor. Uh, I did inform Ms. Parks that I'm very short on time due to other matters, but uh, we will try to proceed forward and complete this task. All right. Well, I, I, I don't know. From my perspective, I don't like any, any petition to be rushed. And so um, I understand we're under a schedule and we'll try and do it as tightly as possible, but I don't want you to feel precluded uh, in putting on the material today. So. Um, well, Thank you very much, Judge. I do appreciate that. It's highly unusual, but I've been notified of a um, mental health state hospital case just a couple of days ago. I informed Ms. Parks yesterday that I had a conflict. I'm actually due over in court. If we could continue this for a very short period of time, that would be my first request. Uh, and and the COVID thing that um, has happened, um, we're not being notified properly. This is a felony matter in Superior Court um, where my client potentially uh, uh, is uh, going to spend the rest of his life in the mental hospital. So it's a very important matter. I hate to bring it, but it was just sprung on me uh, this week also a couple of days ago. So you learned about this, this the hearing um, in Superior Tuesday. Court a couple of days ago? Tuesday, yes. All right, well, I, I'm just a little bit concerned uh, why you didn't file something immediately at that point in view because we've scheduled and the board members have reviewed the petition packets and so we're all here. That's that's my concern. I, I, I understand uh, it's it's obviously uh, the, the gravity of the other matter, but I'm, I'm also wondering why something wasn't filed on Tuesday. Well, I was uh, appearing out of county in court. I'm, I'm, I'm unable to call cases anymore the jail calls cases that are in custody. For example, I had a case at 8.30 that was called at 5.03. I can't make or receive calls or, or do any other activities during that time. I understand All right, so, so is your request to have this matter be continued to the next board hearing or, or are you simply requesting a change in the calendar? In other words, having another petition heard and you appearing later today with your client? And uh, I would ask to do it 
um, at the next board hearing, unfortunately. All right. Um, Ms. Doherty, do you have a position on this? Your Honor, um, at this point, our office will reject, uh, will object to this request. Um, we also don't know why we were not notified prior. In addition, um, we do want to bring to their attention that the board meetings um, are backed up with petitions, and so this could be continued out for a year or greater. Um, there's no guarantee that this petition, if it continued, would be heard within the next year. Um, just from my knowledge of how many current pending petitions are in front of the board. But again, because we are currently in front of the board, I would have to defer to um, the board as to how they want to handle this matter. Um, uh, Jill, and if I may, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I, I will go forward um, because I would not want to put Mr. Byers in that situation of waiting a year. Yeah, because I was I was going to say uh, ultimately I, I'm I was going to speak with the board president as well. But I m my my sense is if you do withdraw the hearing today, you're going to go back in the line for another hearing, and I don't, I can't guarantee to you when that's going to be. I think Ms. Doherty's comments are correct. So is it your desire to proceed today, or or um, do you still wish to continue to a date in the future at some point? We would proceed forward, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. Um, and then, and I, good morning to you, Mr. Byers, as well. I'm sorry, I, I meant to say at the beginning, but thank you. Um, all right. So, um, with that being said, no questions by you, Ms. Docker. Are you ready to proceed? I am ready to proceed. All right. Then I will have you present the uh, petition packet and provide us with an orientation of the case. Thank you. At this point in time, I would mark for identification and offer into evidence at what's been pre-marked as Exhibit A, the original petition packet with accompanying documents. The board members and petitioner have been provided with a copy of the same set of this exhibit. Exhibit A generally consists of a petition for reinstatement for petitioner dated November 28, 2019. A case printout for case CM 040620 and the conditions of probation and conditional revocable release that are unsigned. Follow petitioner's resume and a 2015 reference letter by, written by Olivia Bel Belknap to the criminal law judge and then an employment history for a petitioner. Following that is an order for dismissal in the underlying criminal case um, that was resulted in this accusation that was ordered February 19th of 2020. Following that is over 25 continuing education courses completed by petitioner. At this time, I would ask that Exhibit A be admitted for all purposes. Any objection to Exhibit A? None, Your Honor. Exhibit A is admitted. What's been pre-marked Exhibit B is a license certification for petitioner. I'd ask that that be admitted for all purposes at this point in time. Any objection to Exhibit B? No, Your Honor. Exhibit B is admitted. Thank you. What's been pre-marked as Exhibit C is the notice of hearing and related correspondence in this matter. I'd ask that that be admitted for all purposes at this time. Any objection to Exhibit C? None, Your Honor. Exhibit C is admitted. Thank you. And what is attached as well, attached as Exhibit D is the final decision and order, or default decision and order in this matter license. We'd ask that this be admitted for all purposes at this time. Any objection to Exhibit D? No, Your Honor, we'd submit. Exhibit D is admitted. Thank you. Now I'd like to provide a brief background of petitioner's license history with the board. On or about September 2nd, 2010, the California Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians issued via vocational nurse license VN 252733 to petitioner. On April 25th, 2016, the board filed accusation number VN 2015-907 against petitioner. The accusation alleged that petitioner's license was subject to disciplinary action under code section 2878F, conviction of a crime substantially related to the qualifications, functions, or duties of a vocational nurse, and 2878A, unprofessional conduct, and 2878.5, subdivision C, Conviction of a crime involving possession of a controlled substance. In that on or about April 25th, 2015, petitioner was convicted of his plea of no contest of violating health and safety code section 11358, cultivating marijuana, a felony. In the criminal proceeding entitled People v. Chris 
Byers in Superior Court of Butte County, case number CM040620. The underlying circumstances of this conviction are that petitioner was found to be operating a large scale marijuana plantation in Chico, California. We'd like to point out for the board at this point in time, the petition has been expunged. Petitioner, in this, once this accusation was filed, petitioner failed to file a notice of defense in response to the board's accusation to defend his license. On July 29th, 2016, the board issued a default order and decision revoking petitioner's nurse license effective September 2nd, 2016, and ordering cost of investigation and enforcement of $1,000, $1,405 due upon reinstatement of license. Petitioner has an outstanding cost for investigation and enforcement of his case in the amount of $405 on or around November 28th, 2019. Petitioner filed a petition for reinstatement of his vocational nurse license. Because the burden is on petitioner, I have no further statements, but reserve the right to question petitioner. Thank you very much, Ms. Dougherty. All right, now, Mr. Rooney, it's your opportunity to present petitioner's case. Just a, just a couple of things. I just want the record to be clear. Um, because in light of your withdrawal of the request for continuance, I, I don't, I understand that you are, have some fine pressures today, but it is also important that we, that we hear all of the merits of Mr. Byers' petition. So, um, you know, in, in terms of that, I'm not, uh, you're welcome to, um, you need to present your case the best way you can. And also I'm not going to have board members or the DAGs questioning be cut short, uh, because of the time constraints. So just, while we'll all try and be as efficient as possible, um, we want to make sure we give Mr. Byers' petition the attention and the time it deserves. Um, so in light of your withdrawal of the request for continuance. So with that said, uh, would you like to make um, an opening statement? Yes, Your Honor, briefly. Thank you. Your Honor, I would note, uh, first of all, that Mr. Byers has been an upstanding citizen all of his life. There was an anomaly uh, that occurred in Butte County, which will, I, I will address uh, during the substantive portion of the hearing. I would note that he has been engaging in several activities, including continuing education, uh, volunteer work, uh, readying himself for um, uh, employment and uh, relicensing. He has taken uh, approximately uh, 120 hours of courses. Um, I believe that he has uh, been doing the right things uh, since this uh, uh, event occurred. Part of the facts behind this case is that, um, as is now, he's a San Bernardino County resident. He was uh, he is now engaged in the rental of property, uh, along with um, its upkeep and repair and those kinds of things. Uh, also, um, uh, buying and selling property. He is uh, heavily invested uh, as a real estate um, professional, and. and um, that was exactly what was occurring here with the uh, unusual course of events of the uh, law in California. Uh, he saw an opportunity to also rent land out in Northern California due to the people uh, that were up here engaged in marijuana growing. He did that, rented out properties. He did have a, um, an employee that went uh, rogue and uh, uh, began stealing and also uh, attempted to uh, 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 put Mr. Byers in a compromised position uh, in order to try to take advantage of him, seeing him as a person uh, with uh, financial resources. Uh, she attempted that. Mr. Byers did plead guilty to a cultivation of more than six plants. I would note that the ever-changing situation uh, of that, uh, we would ex ex soon expect uh, that to be legal behavior um, in the future in California, if not the United States from, from what is going on. But what is most important in Mr. Byers is his attitude about the offense and his continuing um, multifaceted attempts to make sure that he is ready for this type of licensing to be reinstated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. Is it your desire to call your client next as a witness? It would be, Your Honor. Thank you so much. All right, Mr. Byers, um, you can still hear me clearly, correct, sir? Yes, sir. Perfect. If you could raise your right hand, I'll swear you in. Do you solemnly state under penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. 
Thank you. And could you please state and spell your name for the record? My name is Christopher Thomas Byers. First name is C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R. Middle name Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S. Last name Byers, B-Y-E-R-S. Thank you, Mr. Byers. And if any question you get asked is unclear or vague, um, let us know and we can get it clarified. If you do answer a question, we'll assume that you understood it. Fair enough? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Mr. Rooney, your witness. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Mr. Byers, um, it looks like you have a long history of being involved in the medical field. Um, did you earn a uh, emergency medical technician certification? Y yes, I did. In um, San Antonio, okay. Texas, during my military training, I, I earned my EMT. Um, that was in 1989, where I then went on to serve in the Gulf War um, in Saudi Arabia as an EMT. Thank you. And um, currently, uh, fast forwarding, if we look toward the future plans, you've been engaging in education. Ultimately, what is it that you're looking to do in the medical field and getting a, a license? What type of license do you seek? Um, currently, um, if, if I did receive my LVN back, I would join a bridge program here in the local community college and, and proceed to get my RN degree. Okay, thank you. Um, during uh, the uh, time the intermittent three, four years now to where you haven't been licensed, have you been engaging in any type of volunteer work? Um, I, I do volunteer locally. I, I help out some homeless encampments here. I um, provide food twi twice a week to these homeless shelters, and I also um, provide clothing. I go to um, lo local yard sales and collect things for, for the disabled and needy people. Okay. And have you been licensed in any other jurisdiction? Um, with a similar type license uh, that you're seeking reinstatement for now? Um, I've been licensed in North Carolina, which was my original licensure state. I was also licensed in South Carolina and also in Georgia. Okay. In the uh, criminal conviction, um, at, at the very beginning of that, uh, you were given a formal probation. Is that correct? That is, that is correct, sir. And that, that uh, very quickly, was that transferred to a different type of probation? Um, in under a year's time, it was transferred to informal probation. Yes, sir. Okay. And by informal probation, um, well, let me backtrack. During the time of the original grant of probation, um, probation requires people to do certain things to reintegrate into the community, doesn't it? Um, yes, sir. And there are uh, active and inactive conditions, for example, being subject to search is inactive, but actively, what type of conditions did they have you do in your grant of probation, if you remember? Um, you know, actively, it was just a phone call every month to check in. Um, I, I did continue seeing my VA doctor um, for, for treatment of PSTD. Um, other than that, no specifics besides staying a good law abiding citizen. Well, and, and even during this situation, in fact, um, you uh, were able to obtain a medical marijuana um, authorization from a licensed physician? Uh, th that is correct, sir. Um, and did you was, voluntarily? It, I'm sorry? Yes, I, I voluntarily did this after the court proceedings. Okay. I, I, I'm sorry, we were speaking over each other, I'm sorry. Um, after you had that authorization from a physician, did you voluntarily give it up or not renew it? I, I currently don't have one, so correct. I, I stopped renewing it um, as of 2018, I believe. Okay. At that time of the offense, um, you were uh, actually arrested and then you were given OR, isn't that correct? Um, for, for the actual event, I, I, I was not arrested. Um, they, they, they took time to research all the information and a year and a half later is when I found out they filed charges. And then I, I, I contacted your, law, your law firm and I then made an appointment to see the judge and correct the this, this situation. But at, and at, at that point, you were living in San Bernardino County, correct? That is correct, yes. Where are we now? Okay. 
you took care of the court matter in Butte County, but you're a resident of San Bernardino. That's correct. Okay. And at, at some point, uh, just to take care of the um, Butte County matter, did you leave San Bernardino County to engage in the process in Butte County? I, I did. I relocated there in um, the summer of 2016 um, to focus on the court trial. And also I, I gained employment there at a, at a um, post-acute nursing facility. Okay. Uh, and, and you never actually did go to trial, isn't that correct? Correct. There was no trial. The majority of the charges were dismissed? That, that is correct. And I pleaded no contest. Okay. And um, during that plea, um, there was a, a, um, a plea was entered, no contest pursuant to people versus West. That is, so you weren't actually admitting the offense, but taking advantage of that plea bargain offer to resolve. Isn't that correct? That is correct, sir. And uh, you already have testified that that was um, uh, almost immediately transferred to informal probation correct? That is correct. And it was reduced to a misdemeanor at some point. Do you remember that? That was all at the same time. Within 11 months of the, the, the sentencing, it was reduced. Okay. And during uh, the preparation of this case for the court in order to decide what to do, uh, did you have a conversation with the probation officer? Um, no, probation was very off hands. I, I had one introduction when I first started the program. After that, it was just phone calls and um, just information. I'm sorry. Previous, no, I, to, previous to being uh, sentenced by the judge, you had uh, an interview with probation, didn't you? I did. Yes, sir. And during that um, particular um, interview, uh, that was memorialized in the probation officer's report and, and provided to the judge. Correct. 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 Um, in that statement, you indicated that uh, you never received any financial proceeds from marijuana. No, that sir. Correct? That is correct, sir. And um, that the um, uh, uh, one of the collective members, Vince, uh, used any profits to reinvest in the property and supplies um, of their operation. Correct. That is correct. And so I'm going to object at this point in time. You did. Sorry, uh, what is what is your objection, Ms. Doherty? Sorry. I, I would just like to remind opposing counsel that we're not here to relitigate the underlying facts of the conviction. All right, I, I note that objection, Ms. Ms. Doherty. And, and yes, Mr. Rooney, um, you know, I'm, I want to give you some leeway uh, to the extent you're addressing the, the seriousness of the underlying conduct, etc. But... Um, the focus of this proceeding is really more on what happened after that. What is the rehabilitative efforts uh, that have happened since then? So I would just encourage you to devote your time and resources to, uh, to that testimony. And also to the extent that documents are already in the record about the convictions, we don't, we don't necessarily need to retread all of that ground. But with that said, I don't want to preclude you. If you believe there's something really relevant, you can do that, but just... Uh, just get there a little more quickly and, and focus on the rehabilitation evidence. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, both of you. Um, this underlying action uh, is de minimis, and I'm just trying to show that, uh, that this is not a person um, that is using uh, more serious controlled substances or anything like that. Mr. Byers, have you ever been addicted to any substance? Um, tobacco once, and I stopped that. And um, in in this particular matter, um, you have uh, taken some steps um, in order to not uh, engage uh, in any type of uh, use of any uh, substance that would alter your ability to think and, and to interact and to um, be able to be clear with uh, people that you deal with. That is correct. I through the VA, they've they've taught me some ways to deal with my PSTD in uh, other than chemical form. And um, you ha you uh, do not use marijuana. That is correct, sir. No cannabis. And what is your clean and sober date from all substances um, 
uh, I'll say, illegal substances or mind-altering substances? Um, extend them over two, two or three years, sir. Okay, thank you. And um, in those two or three years, um, there are, uh, was there any treatment that you went to? Did you attend any 12-step meetings, um, anything like that? Um, no, sir. I, 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 I had therapy at the VA, which was individualized and then group therapy. Um, this was more for coping skills, um, not, not addiction of any kind. Um, were you ever addicted to marijuana? No, sir. Did you use it on a habitual basis? No, sir. Not daily. Um, and in, in the, uh, amount that you, uh, I'll say during the time that you were using, um, did you remain employed? I, I, I ne never used while I was at work. Um, and no, I wasn't employed at the time. You're, you're self-employed as you are now? Correct. Um, and so you continue to do that during the time previous to this offense and after this offense? Yeah, this was under rec uh, medical recommendation um, for my PSTD. Correct. And in... in uh, Previously, you mentioned that you did volunteer work with homeless people. Correct. And uh, do you find, um, is, is there a particular reason why you've identified that um, area to put in time doing volunteer work? I find there's a lot of veterans in, in that type of lifestyle, so I like helping out the fellow veterans. Okay. And um, do you help out uh, any other uh, people with uh, issues at this time? Um, not other than the encampments, no. And it uh, was there um, another person that you were taking care of previously, uh, an elder gentleman? Um, cur currently, I, I, I do take care of a 27-year autistic man. Um, he has seizure activities. He has um, crisis, um, autistic crises. So um, it's very hands-on, caring. And uh, tell us a little bit about that. What, what do you do with this art autistic person? Um, my, my, my patient is, um, 27 years old. He's high, high, high functional. So he's able to learn life skills, um, after repetitive learning. So I help him with his ADLs, um, start off with basics, you know, shower, brushing teeth, things of that nature, getting dressed. Um, after we have our morning routine, we, we go out and we, we see the community. Um, we're, we're lucky enough to go to parks. We go to the beaches. Um, even, even with these, these outbursts that he may have, we're able to control and, um, have him have much of a normal life that he deserves. Okay. And um, do you do that under an organization umbrella or how, how is that done? I, I, I am employed through um, his, his trust fund, which is a, a Rademacher trust, which is also a part of the MGR property management team. Um, so I do it through a corporation. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm looking for why else do you think you're ready for reinstatement of this license before the board? Well, I, I believe that I'm a very professional, caring individual. I learned most of these skills from the military, and I believe I've always been able to provide these skills to the community, um, whether it's a hospice setting or whether it's an industrial setting or whether it's in a military setting. Um, I'm a very skillful, caring person who has never been unable to provide this care. Okay. And um, what did you do at the National Personnel Records Center um, for the National Archives? I, I, I'm not sure, sir. Okay. Um, and uh, your uh, discharge from the military was that honorable? Oh, of course it was. Um, I also came away with a couple um, medals. And tell us a little bit about the um, activities that you do at the military as far as counseling uh, through the Veteran Affairs, please. Um, I, I, I see them yearly just for a physical um, assessment, but I, I, I did engage with them for a period of about 16 months um, where I talk to a therapist one-on-one, -on -one, and I also had group sessions with other um, veterans, which I found um, very, very much a credit to helping cope with some of the 
the stresses that I, I, I endured through the through the service. And throughout that uh, process of a year and a half doing uh, the individual counseling and other groups that you attended, um, do you feel that has assisted uh, in your um, thwarting any marijuana use? Oh, mo most definitely. They, they gave me ways to cope with uh, my inability to sleep um, and ways to deal with my, my stress that I, I have from my memories. So most definitely. Okay. And have you contacted the, uh, uh, I'll say, uh, co college in your area about this bridge program? Um, I, I have investigated online. I haven't gone to the campus. It's, it's currently closed because of COVID. But um, without a license, I, ca I can't move forward. So I need one step at a time. And uh, in doing that, is that going to be full-time education, part-time um, if if the, you were relicensed and entered that program, would you continue to work or just solely do education? I, I would do a combination of both. Um, working is very important to me, and going back to school is very important. So I time of my life. Okay. Um, so it sounds like to me um, you went into the military immediately. Your passion was medical in nature. That is correct. Um, First, I was an EMT. Once I got out of Desert Storm, I began my nursing program, and that was in 1991. So uh, for, for you, unlike some people, um, this license wasn't merely licensure and employment, but a continuing effort throughout your life to be in that medical field. Yes, I can take very much pride from that, sir. And um, it, it, it sounds like to me that um, you're currently doing a couple of things, not only doing uh, the real estate that makes money, but it sounds like also taking care of this autistic person. Yes, they're, they're very much enjoyable parts of my life. Is it in, in way of how much time do you spend? Um, do you spend about half the time in each of those activities or three quarters with the autistic person? How, how is that division? Um, the, the, the autistic job is, is 40 hours a week, so it's, it's full time. Um, my real estate side of my business, it, it takes probably 40 hours of my life also. Um, but it can be done in between different odd hours. And have we missed anything else about what you're doing to ready yourself for reinstatement of this license, Mr. Byers? Um, not that I'm just a motivated soul who wants to continue my life and the career I love. And um, in addition to the uh, uh, what you did with the VA and, and looking into the schooling and, and all of the courses that you completed with the certificates, um, have you been reading any books uh, in the medical field at all? Um, no, I, I, I did some, you know, shortly after my conviction, but no, I've not read any books here lately. Just, um, you know, magazines, things of that nature. Okay. So um, I don't know if you recall, but on the petition you indicated uh, there was some periodicals or books that you read, nursing care, uh, Alzheimer's, management of spinal uh, conditions, strokes. Do you, do you remember that? Yes, I remember those books. They were, they, were, they were at a friend's house when I was visiting that I enjoyed those. Okay. And um, so you just did that just <laughs> as recreational reading practically? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Leisure, leisure reading. So it, it, it sounds like it's fair to say that um, this is a huge part of your life. You've been doing it all of your life and um, that you're continuing to do um, more reading, more studying and looking toward hopefully advancing your career, even though you're unlicensed at this time. That's absolutely correct, sir. Uh, your Honor, no further questions at this time. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. All right, Ms. Doherty, do you have any questions for Mr. Byers? I do. Thank you. Please go ahead. Mr. Byers, in 2016, you were aware an accusation was filed against your licensed vocational nurse license, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And why did you fail to respond to the board when that accusation was filed? I received a letter from the board that instructed me that it might be more beneficial if I just let my license 
elapse instead of trying to actually combat this charge. Um, a lot of my focus went to the, the criminal hearing and my resources were very low at the end of that point. So it made sense just to let my license elapse. Okay, thank you. And you understand that your involvement um, that led to the conviction was against the law, it led to the conviction for cultivating marijuana was against the law, correct? I, I understand that that law is very complex. Um, so I understand that growing cannabis with a doctor's recommendation is allowed in some counties and other counties it's not. So yes, ma'am, but no, ma'am. So at the time, just for clarification, at the time that you engaged in these acts, you were not clear of what law applied to your current county. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, you could say that's true. Yes. The, the, the law has changed every six months with the local politicians. And I know you talked about your criminal probation. Do you recall when you successfully completed that probation? I, I think it was 2018, ma'am. And do you currently have any criminal convictions the board is unaware of? No, ma'am, I do not. And are there any current criminal or civil charges pending against you? No, ma'am. And you stated earlier um, that you held um, licensed vocational nurse licenses in other jurisdictions, other states. Uh, can you tell me the status of that license in North Carolina? It's currently suspended. It's awaiting satisfaction of this hearing. And can you tell me the status of the South, South Carolina license? I um, ha hadn't renewed that in, in, in several years. It's been over 10 years, so it's just not a current license. And was there any discipline ever taken against that license? No, ma'am. And then the Georgia license? I maintained that for, I think, five years while I lived in Georgia and then let it elapse after I moved out of state. And was any discipline ever taken against that license? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. And are there any other states that I may have missed that you um, have held a license in? No, just North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and then California. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong, you testified earlier that you used marijuana to help cope with your PTSD. Is that correct? That is correct, ma'am. And since you're no longer using marijuana, what do you do to cope with PTSD? What uh, steps do you take? I'm sorry, um, I couldn't hear the question. I'm sorry. I'll repeat it. Thank you, Ms. Doherty. If you could just repeat it, that'd be great. Thank you. Since you stated that you no longer use marijuana to help cope with your PTSD, what steps you take to help cope with PTSD? Um, most of my issues do happen at nighttime during my periods of rest. Um, so I've been taught coping skills as, as far as when I wake up from a situation to take a shower, to take a few minutes to regain my cooth, and then to try and, you know, readdress sleeping or resting. Um, in, in, in other situations, I can call up friends who have um, had situations like I have, and I can, I can talk to them about it. And so ventilating my problems help me through this and having a, a system of friends who I can deal with on these issues who understand. And you had mentioned that you have attended therapy and group therapy um, to help deal with this, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Are you currently still enrolled in therapy or group therapy? No, ma'am. And when was the last time you received therapy? It was 2019. And why did you stop therapy? I felt that I've made progress and I was able to cope with my, my, my PSDD on my own. And do you have a plan in place if your PTSD begins to worsen again um, of steps to take instead of turning to um, treatment from marijuana? Yeah, the VA, the VA is always there for me. I can call and have an appointment to speak to a psychiatrist or a therapist again. And do you have a support system? 
I, I have friends I served with. And can you explain to me a little bit more what that support system, I know you said you have friends, but what that support system looks like? You know, it, it, it's just a matter of reaching out, texting and calling and hearing voices and talking to people about familiar activities that aren't so familiar to other people. Okay. And you also stated that, correct me if I'm wrong, you currently have two jobs, one in real estate and the other treating an autistic individual. Correct? That is correct, ma'am. And just so I can understand and help the board understand, um, your treatment or your employment to treat this autistic individual is employed through a trust fund. Is that correct? Um, yeah, it, 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 I'm paid through MGR, which is a corporation, but it, it's his, his trust funds connected to that. It, it's, it's for an and you had touched it, it, it's private care. Okay. And how did you come about this job? I, I, I found it on Craigslist. And you had touched on some of the responsive roles and responsibilities of this job. Um, can you walk me a little bit more in depth of what those actual responsibilities are, what you do um, to help this individual? Sure, sure. Um, you know, walking through my day in, in, in the morning when I get there, um, I, I, I make sure that his, his medication has been administered to him. And then we proceed to do daily hygiene. Um, I try and teach him skills from as simply as washing his hair and assisting with brushing his teeth. Um, a matter of routine can help him grasp onto the ideas of how to create more independence for his own lifestyle. Um, after we basically do the ADLs in the morning, we proceed to a local park, we get some physical activities, and then we go to school. He's lucky enough to have his own classroom, his own learning environment. Um, there we, we do different cognitive exercises with um, puzzles and with numbers and with lettering. Um, we take nutritional breaks throughout the day and we get more physical activities. Um, try and introduce him to new things. Um, him being autistic, he has a ability to refuse new interactions and new places. So sometimes a little patience and a little coaxing and um, he's able to take on new tasks that way. Okay, he's and you also, had started off. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. You can go ahead. I was just gonna announce that he, he also has um, frequent seizures. Um, his seizure activity is, is usually three times a week. Um, it's control with medication, but also keeping the environment safe for him. Um, besides the seizure activity, he does have eating difficulties. So choking hazards are always something that I'm on alert with him with. And then there's um, his physical outburst, keeping him safe and other staff members safe and the general public safe when these outbursts do happen. And you had started off saying that you make sure his medication is administered. Have you ever administered medication to this individual? I do not, no. I, I do monitor it though. I look for side effects. I look for the, the medication he's taking, but no, there's there's other people who do administer that currently. And if this individual was to have a, or has or would have had a seizure, do you administer the medication to them? No, we just document it, um, time, duration, intensity. Okay. And when's the last time you practice, actually practice as a vocational nurse in California? I think it was 2016, ma'am. Um, at Life, Life House Cyprus in Paradise, and it was September 2015 was my last employment month. 2015, is that what you said? Correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And besides the continuing education um, you provided to the board and what you discussed with your attorney, is there anything else you've done to keep up with the current nursing practices? Um, not technically, you know, I, I follow YouTube and I, I, I try and keep informed on, you know, new, 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 new diagnosis and new treatments for things, but nothing in, in the clinical setting. And are you prepared to sit for the NCLEX? Should your license be reinstated? Yes, ma'am. Yes. What a refresher course. And besides the refresher course, what other steps would you take to prepare for that exam? 
And just think the refresher course probably would be sufficient. And do you understand that you currently have $1,405 outstanding in cost recovery to the board? Um, yes, ma'am, I am. And if your license is reinstated, are you prepared to pay that amount? Yes, that's no problem. And, and, and if your license was reinstated on a probationary status, would you be able to comply with the terms of a probation? Most definitely. And what references can you provide the board that um, your prior conduct is behind you? I'm sorry, will you repeat that, please? What assurances can you provide the board that your prior conduct is behind you? Um, you know, my, my prior conduct wasn't really my conduct. It was someone renting my property. So currently I use more due diligence on the people who are at my properties and make sure what's taking place in my properties are legal. One second. And do you, if your California license is reinstated, do you plan on seeking licensure or remedying any license in other states? Um, not at this time, no. And your ultimate goal, if I correct me if I'm wrong, is to have this license reinstated to become an RN, is that correct? That is correct, ma'am. And if your license is reinstated, what type of job um, field are you looking to um, enter? Um, my, my current position is very flexible to my needs, so I would try and maybe continue working where I am now. Um, there are several medical needs of this, this young man, so getting <laughs> orders to ha have a licensed nurse on staff would not be outlandish. But other, other than that, I, I probably hospice. I really enjoy working with the hospice community. Thank you. I have nothing further for this petitioner at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Doherty. All right, um, now I will turn it to the board members for questions and I'm gonna go in reverse alphabetical order now, um, starting with uh, Ms. Turner. Do you have any questions for Mr. Byers? Yes, I do. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first, Mr. Byers, I want to thank you for your service as a veteran nurse and your work with the homeless. I want to acknowledge that. Thank you. Okay, and then I want to ask you, um, on the one hand, I heard testimony that you leased or rented your property to another and that they were the ones involved in the marijuana cultivation plantation. And then on the other hand, I heard you say that you had a medical marijuana prescription and you were confused about the rules and the regulations regarding uh, the legality of cultivating marijuana. So, did you, are you saying you had knowledge of it or you did not have knowledge of it? I, I was unaware of what was taking place on my property, but the question was about marijuana law. Um, and I, I, I am familiar with the marijuana law. Okay, so that was concerning your defense against the charges when you were talking about how you knew about the law. Correct. Okay. All right. In looking at your motion to expunge, it looks like there's a first page, a filing page, but I don't believe that I saw a second page with the judge's signature or stamp on it. Was this expungement request granted or dismissal request granted it, it was ma'am yes ma'am okay uh was there a reason why the judge's signature page was not included um it could just been an oversight all right all right so obviously this was something that was reduced to a misdemeanor it, it, it was yeah. yes, ma'am. It, it was reduced to a misdemeanor within eleven months of the sentencing, 
because of Prop um, 64 in 2018 or 2016. Um, the expungement I just did last year in February, um, ex removing the even the misdemeanor from from my conviction. Okay. All right. Thank you. No further you, questions. All right, thank you, Ms. Turner. Um, Ms. Rubalkova, do you have any questions? Thank you, Your Honor, um, and thank you, Mr. Byers, for being here today. I just wanted to say thank you for your service. Um, I have no questions. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Ms. Brooks, do you have any questions? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor. Um, sir, I would like to thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, I, you know, I, I think... It, there are a lot of brave men and women that serve our country, and I really appreciate it. I do have a few questions for you, though. Yes. Um, does your PTSD symptoms gradually come on, or is it like a sudden with no warning? Um, I, I think my PTSD symptoms were always there. Um, I just didn't recognize them as symptoms. I think by going to therapy and talking to other veterans, I was more able to recognize um the trigger of my symptoms and what would calm them and what would exacerbate them. And that actually, thank you for that. That actually brings me to my next question. Like, what are your triggers and stressors? And if you've identified them, um, I'm still trying to grasp how are you handling those triggers? Um, most of my triggers happen in the hours where it's dark and where I'm resting. Um, they, they mostly come from dreams. Um, so awaking from the dreams and stopping what I'm doing, not trying to go right back to sleep by taking a warm shower, it kind of resets my body. Um, if I'm able to go back to sleep after that, I can usually engage in a full night's sleep. If I'm still startled or unable to rest, I then try and use music or movies as a distraction and if, if in no other doubt call up a friend and, and talk to them about what i'm feeling okay so you're not on any medications at all to help you sleep at night no ma'am i am not okay um and then you mentioned that you are in real estate and i know you have that patient that you're taking care of um and also you're trying to petition to get your license reinstated and i'm kind of wondering um, how you will juggle them all because um, we know that nursing at times can be very stressful. Um, I don't really know about real estate, but I can imagine, right? So how will you manage that stress? Because there's distress in our lives all together, right? So yes, how are you gonna handle all of those things? Well, I'm lucky enough to have a spouse. Um, she is very engaged in my real estate. So she'll be able to take on the brunt of that business while I focus on my nursing career. Okay. And, and do you still have urges to use the marijuana? Because I know that um, it was prescribed or suggested for you and um, you did indulge. So I'm wondering, I know you no longer indulge in it, but do you have the urges to use marijuana? Do you, is the urge there? Um, no, ma'am, I can't say that is the case. Okay, and may I ask you what triggered your PTSD? Well, you know, like I said, it, it, it's, probably, it's probably been with me for some time and I just didn't acknowledge it. Whether I had to be, be more of a man or be more of a nurse and not, not admit my own insecurities or my own ailments, I tried to just get on with my life. Um, with this conviction, I was more able to talk to the VA more openly about my feelings, about what was going on. So I, I, I believe it was always there. And it was a matter of me just stepping up and asking for help. Okay, sir. Thank you. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. Uh, Ms. Norton, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, I do, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, again, Mr. Byers, Army nurse to Army nurse, thank you for your service. Um, I also 
uh, had a calling at a very young age, went in the Army at 18 to be a nurse. And the experiences that you go through in that um, are just unbelievable experiences. And I did not go through what you went through. So, again, thank you for your service. Um, <clears throat> the one, one question that I have in my head is more so thinking about critical thinking skills. So I've heard all of your testimony, and you, you said something about you received a letter from the board stating that it might be better for you to allow your license to lapse. There is a significant difference between allowing your license to lapse and having your license revoked. Um, and then you also mentioned that you let your Georgia license elapse. So um, looking back on this now, would you have done things differently? Because had you just allowed your license to expire, you wouldn't have to go through what you're going through now. Um, so can you speak to that a little bit? Well, you know, if, if I hadn't just gone through a judicial hearing, I probably would have been more engaged to defend my license or to step up and, and, and do what the board required of me. But after dealing with Butte County, I was exhausted from, from the whole concept of this criminal activity um, being thrust in, 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 in the spotlight. So I, I just wasn't in a state of mind to, to defend myself, especially to the board, when I just came away from being sentenced for this conviction. So I, I, you know, if I could redo something, I don't, I don't know what changes it would make in it, but I, I financially, I couldn't have hired Mr. Rooney to represent me then. I was not in a position. I was unemployed. I was, if, if there's a time to be depressed, I, I was probably depressed then. Um, but I saw my way through that period and moved on with my life like everyone has to do. Okay, thank you. And then you do, realize that should your license be reinstated, and, and I hear you say that you want to just bridge this and go on to become an RN, but you will have to work a certain degree as an LVN um, so that we can monitor your progress and monitor your behavior as we reinstate your license. So I just want to be sure that, that you are aware that there would be a, um, the expectation that you would work as an LVN. Yes, ma'am. I, I was hoping that my, my current job would maybe fill that gap. But yes, I'm aware that there's a probation to fulfill. Okay. So your current job would... So what is your classification in your current job? I, I'm just a caregiver or an aide, but um, there, there there's medications to oversee there. There's um, definitely diagnoses that, that can be monitored. Um, so my job there could probably facilitate my, my, my licensing, um, but I, I don't know the technicality of what the board would require. You know, I, I can easily go to a, to a hospice or to a, to a skilled facility where, where my, most of my skills lie, if, if that's needed. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Norton. Um, Mr. Maxey, do you have any questions for Mr. Byers? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, and once again, Mr. Byers, I mean, <laughs> Your Honor, yes, thank you. Um, and Mr. Byers, uh, thank you uh, for your service to our country. Thank um, you. you know, PTSD, um, as we all know, is, is something that many of us um, are familiar with. Um, This is the moderator. It appears that Mr. Max's call has dropped. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, this is Jack Van Royen. Um, why don't we, um, we can, well, we want Mr. Max, let's see if we can get Mr. Maxi back in a, in a minute uh, so that he can hear the testimony. Yes. I'm looking to wait for him to come back in. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Just let us know when he's back. I will. Thank you.
And just for the benefit of everyone who's listening, I, I could, we could go on to the next person to ask questions, but the problem with that is that then Mr. Maxi would not hear the, the, the answers and response. So I, uh, um, if he's going to be deliberating, I want him to be able to hear the response. That's what I'm waiting. Apologies, Mr. Max, he still has not called back in yet. Can we please give him about three, four minutes to see if he can back in? That's, that's fine. I, are, are you able to reach out to him, the moderator? I did. I have already reached out to him. Oh, perfect. Okay, great. Yes, then we'll wait another two minutes. Thank you. Okay, I've made contact with Mr. Maxi. Give us two minutes. Okay, sounds good.
Mr. Maxi is back on. Hi, Mr. Maxi, can you hear me? This is Judge Van Royen. I can't. I can, and I, I, I don't know what happened. I apologize for my technical difficulty. So, uh, oh, no apologies needed. We all have to just work through these issues. No problem. Thank you. I'm so glad you're back with us. Um, all right. So uh, you didn't miss much. Uh, or essentially, you were about to ask your question, and then you were cut off. So I'm just going to have you uh, restate your 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 question. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Um, so, Mr. Byer, uh, really, my question was uh, after um, going through something that. Um, over 500,000 um, military vets um, in our country go through. Um, what are you doing currently um, and what will you be doing for the foreseeable future to ensure that you're working with other vets that are going through similar, similar experiences um, in organizations as well? Currently, my, my, my contacts who my, my, my close friends, but at the homeless encampments, I, I meet several veterans who um, I, 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 I offer, you know, conversation with, which I hope is more than just conversation, um, because sometimes people just need someone to talk to in a right direction to go down. And then my second question, Mr. Byers, um, cannabis is, is legal in this state of California, and, and you are correct in saying that it, it has been um, uh ebbs and flows through the years here in the state of California, as it is still con consistently in our country. Um, how much, um, how dependent are you on um, cannabis? And, and, and do you think that there's a way that you can take other forms of relief um, that will be able to provide you the same type of um, uh, health benefits um, for you and your PTSD? Um, I, I have not used the cannabis product in over two years now, so I have found other ways of coping, and most of that's with, um, you know, re-educating myself on how to deal with the, the, the stress at night that I, I sometimes endure. Um, so I, I have stopped using the product, so that's, that's not an issue. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, there I was muted. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Maxi. Mr. Hill, do you have any questions? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Byers, uh, can never say this enough, but thank you for your service. Especially, thank I'd you. like to acknowledge your, uh, your work with that individual with autism. Uh, that can be very difficult, and thank you very much for that. Thank you, ma'am. I uh, just have one question. Uh, can you speak a little bit on um, your employment history here in California as an LVN. It looks like uh, three of the four facilities you've worked in, uh, Cypress, uh, Lifehouse Cypress for five months, uh, Gridley Healthcare for four months, uh, Country Crest post-acute care for four months, uh, have been relatively short. Uh, can you speak to that just a little bit on why your employment with them uh, lasted sure. five months or less? Yeah, I have no problem. Um, as my career in nurse nursing, I've found there's places you want to work and you enjoy working. And I found there's places that you don't enjoy working and maybe should not even be in business. Um, so I would relate those short term projects as places I did not want to stake my career as a nurse. Just before that, if you look at Cottonwood Post Acute Care, I was there for over two years. It was a place that had high standards and they were really about patient care. Thank you very much. No further questions. Thank you, Mr. Hill. And um, Ms. Carpenter, do you have any questions? Ms. Carpenter, are you still with us? I think your showing is muted. Um, there we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Go ahead whenever you're ready, ma'am. I hit the wrong button. Um, yes, I just had one quick question. Um, Mr. Byers, you've testified today that um, you've had therapy and, and group sessions, yet on your application, um, you've marked no, never attended, and no, never. Is there a reason for this difference in perception? 
Um, the, what what page are you on? May I refer to that before I answer? Uh, your application itself, A006, um, it's five and six. No, it's uh, six and seven, excuse me. A006 and A007. Um, I, I, I interpreted that as dependency on controlled substances or substances alone. So I did not look at that as therapy for PSTD. Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carpenter. Um, Ms. Uh, Amazola de Herrera, do you have any questions? Uh, no questions, Your Honor. Uh, at this point, I just would like to say thank you so much for your service. Thank you for coming um, before us and telling us your story. And um, and that would be all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Um, Mr. Durking, do you have any questions? Um, just one, Your Honor, if I may. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Byers, thank you being here today and thank you for your service. Um, when did you uh, first start working with your uh, current client? Your petition has not been updated uh, since your petition date of November 28th, 2019. Okay, I, I began this year in June, so June 2020. Thank you very much. Nothing else, Your Honor. Thank you. And finally, Dr. Mountain, do you have any questions? Uh, thank you, Your Honor, and I too want to say thank you for your service and for your work with your client with autism. Uh, I have no further questions at this time. Thank you, though, for coming and sharing your story with us, Mr. Byers. Thank you, ma'am. Perfect. And, and let me just circle back um, to everyone. So first, counsel, um, uh, Ms. Doherty, did you have any further questions at this time? I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rooney, did you have any questions of your own client? Your Honor, I, I would probably just uh, either close or clean up a couple of, if the uh, court would uh, allow me to close for a minute or two, I would just do that. I think we've covered the topics. Perfect. Okay, okay so let me, let me just make sure all the questions are resolved and then I'll get back to your closing. Um, did any other board member have questions that occurred to them since I called on them? And please just speak out because as I can't, I can't actually see you. So just identify your name and pose the question. Not hearing anything, I believe that's all the questions answered. Um, so then that takes us to closing. Um, Yes, you're, uh, you're welcome to take about two minutes or so if you have any closing remarks, um, uh, Mr. Just, go for it. And, and Your Honor, I'll, I'll take one of those minutes and just ask one more question, if I may. All right. And I'll just remind Mr. Byer, you're still under oath. You understand that, right? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, go ahead, sir. Previously, you testified, Mr. Byers, that you knew marijuana law. Correct? Correct, correct sir. But... Is it fair to say you were surprised um, by the charges themselves? Um, mo most definitely. Um, I, I, I did possess a doctor's recommendation, which I thought would validate any complications that arose from there. So you, you thought everything that you were doing was legal? Correct. And you were basically a landlord as opposed to a, a drug uh, manufacturer? Correct. I was subleasing out the property. Your Honor, I would close with your permission. Yes, please go ahead, sir. Your Honor, there, there are several things I will just very briefly touch upon. Um, Mr. Byers has a laudatory career, I think. Um, and and in, when this situation took place with his license, his thought to let it lapse, he testified, no, no, he didn't want to fight. No more fighting. He, he'd already just got done fighting, quote unquote, you know, one arm of the government and criminal court. Uh, he thought the uh, behavior that he was engaging in was legal. Um, but afterward, I think his response is what's most important. Uh, many times uh, it has been said the best therapy is to uh, provide therapy. 
um, to help others with what is sometimes a pressing issue for you uh, is just the course of many of the self-help programs. By doing what Mr. Byers has done, by talking to others, to, to not stay silent, but to actually have that release is a huge tension release, uh, a huge stress reduction. He has had a long career without any of these types of problems that would normally be seen in a PTSD person or a person addicted to substances or otherwise. He's maintained employment, been able to do that in several jurisdictions, all the while following all the rules and not having any problems. He is in fact gearing up to do just that and more of that. He has uh, specifically taken a position where he could take on more duties, hopefully to morph into uh, LVN position from his current caregiver position at the same current employment. That's planning. That's the ability to pick up the pieces uh, from this uh, situation to really get it to be a positive in the life. And at the end of the day, it's this legal intervention that really helped him in his personal life, it sounds like. It increased his awareness. It increased, and that, that can't be understated, the awareness that there is a trigger going on. Um, that is what lets us make a conscious decision to employ those calming techniques that Mr. Byers testified to. The, the help in that personal life um, generally is a great help in our professional life. If our personal life is going well, we can concentrate on that, that particular professional life. His expectation is just that. He has done all the things that are necessary in order for a person to be able to re-engage, even though he's a person that didn't suffer significant dire consequences of having a long-term issue like addiction or uh, inability to uh, uh, engage in gainful employment or to complete tasks and careers uh, with the Army and with these different locations. So I, I believe that uh, Mr. Byers has done a great job Mr. Byers, I too, thank you for your service and thank you, Your Honor, for your time. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. And then uh, let me just make sure, you, no additional documents to present other than what's already been admitted, correct? Correct. And you correct. don't have any additional witnesses to testify as well, correct? Submitted, yes. Perfect. All right, then that concludes, oh, let me check someone. Is there anyone else who wanted to ask a question? I'm sorry, I heard someone jump in. Your Honor, this is Caitlin Daugherty, Deputy Attorney General. I just would um, ask the board if they do find it appropriate to reinstate a petitioner's license that they include um, term 24, since which is past the licensure exam as the petitioner's license has been lapsed for more than four years and that they associate the appropriate costs um, due to the board at that time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Doherty. Okay, so that was the that was the term twenty uh, probation term twenty four and the costs that you were mentioning, correct? Correct. All right. Thank you so much. Um, any questions by the board members? I just want to make sure I uh, just identify your name and speak if if uh, you have any. All right. I'm not hearing any. So at this point, then. Um, the record is closed and the case is submitted for decision and we are off the record in this matter. Um, before I surrender to you, Dr. I just want to bring to everyone's attention, I am getting um, inquiries through the chat function of the board meeting uh, from an individual. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to even name the name, but someone asking me about recommendations to expedite the process of the board hearing his case, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I just want to make really clear that I, as the judge, I absolutely do not respond to private chats during these hearings. I do not give legal advice. If you have, if that individual has questions about the board's procedures, you should you have to you should contact the board's staff um, through their public, uh, whatever me mechanism you can contact them through their website. Um, I cannot provide recommendations or legal advice. And I'm just curious for the moderator as to whether I, I, I'm, I've done these with other boards with different forms. I'm not sure whether we whether we should entertain private messages to board members and the judge. This is the moderator. I do not recommend any private messages to any of the board members. Uh, this person actually on the end tagged everybody. 
Um, okay. I have responded to him. Um, I do have his question um, listed for futures. So that way I can um, forward it to um, Helen Park. So no, there, nobody is supposed to be answering those. Perfect. I, I, I just wanted the record to be clear to this individual, if he or she's listening, as well as to the board. I, I, I do not consider, nor do I respond to those sorts of questions, and nor do I recommend individual board members. Do that. Um, that is something that the individual should raise with the appropriate uh, staff um, and not with individual board members or judges. All right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mountain. I defer to you as to a break or, um, or hearing the next petition, whatever your desire is. Um, I I feel like we should press on to the next pet petition unless there's a board member who would like to call for a break. So I'd like to give him that opportunity to speak up at this time. This is the board moderator. So for the final petitioners, I have three um, call-in users um, that have not been identified. I'd like a few minutes to identify if these may in fact be one or two of our petitioners. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so please give me like five minutes. Thank you, everybody. All right, sounds good. So, um, Dr. Mountain, is it okay if we come back at 11.55? Probably that gives everyone time to just get up and stretch or go to the restroom. Yes, excellent. Thank you so much. All right, we'll be back at 11.55. Thank you.